Hello everybody. Today I'd like to talk about something a little different. Today I want to talk to you about the exam and how we go about studying for the exam, what's inside the exam and how to pass the exam and answer the common questions that come up. Number one that normally arises um, in my courses, is the exam hard? If you don't study for it, it will be very hard. Is it hard in the scheme of Microsoft exams? No, not really. Okay, um, it's about the middle point. It's harder than an AZ one. Um, sorry, harder than AZ nine hundred, but not as hard as something like an AZ five hundred or an AZ three hundred five. Okay, number two. How do I take the exam? Well. You take the exam in two options. Either you can take it in an exam center, and th those exam centers are located in places like colleges and universities, and also IT companies and IT training institutions, uh, normally within big cities. Or you can do what most people do today, which is to take the exam online. If you wish to do that, there's a very easy process for it. Over here, the best location for you to go and check out is this resource location on learn.microsoft.com. What you'll find is a collection of information, this tips section, which we'll go over in a moment. But to register for the exam, come down here, click schedule exam. If you click schedule exam, it will take you to the exam registration pane. You can, um, well, register for a brand new exam. And if you do register for a brand new exam, you will need some credit card information, some um, ID, and then you will be presented with some time slots. The time slots that you actually get to select are based on what's available. And if you choose one, what will happen is you will be asked to download some software to your computer, which will lock your computer out during the time you are taking the exam. During this exam, somebody will be watching you through your webcam and your live microphone. They will ask to see around your desk. They will ask to see underneath your desk. They will ask you to do things like turn your pockets out and actually ask to look at your glasses up close to see that you haven't got any recording devices. Make sure your environment is clean. They will expect you to get rid of everything. You are not even allowed a glass of water on your desk. Once you choose to start the exam at a specified time or the time that's of your choosing, well, how will it look? It will actually look like this. If we come back to uh, the overview section for the AZ-104, there is an option here for an exam sandbox. This exam sandbox makes uh, a temporary exam that looks exactly like the real exam. This is what you'll expect to see. There's a license agreement, of course. Once you agree to the license agreement, you can go straight into the examination. And this will give you a variety of different question types that you will see during a Microsoft exam. For example, single choice questions, multiple choice questions, and drag and drop kind of questions. If you have never actually been through a Microsoft exam process, what I do advise is having a bit of a click through here so you can see exactly what it is you're going to see. If you go through this entire process and click end exam, you will be given a score. So that comes to point Three. What about the score? How much score do I need to pass? Well, you need 700. You need 700 out of a thousand. Okay, how much is a question worth? Various. It depends on the question. Do I know what that question is going to be worth? No, you don't. Some questions are worth more than others. Some questions will not be marked at all because they will be beta questions. Do you know? No. Does it matter? It really doesn't. Does the passing score matter? No, it really doesn't. If you really think about it, you're going to be presented with a number of questions between 50 to 70 different questions. You'll have um, more than enough time to do it. Um, I think the timings, what are the timings for this? I think the timings are two hours for the AZ-104. It's more than enough time to get through the information that's in there. Uh, if you're running out of time, you haven't studied enough. That's the basic rule set there. So does it matter that you don't know about the question scores? Not really. There's a question in front of you. 
answer the question and move on. That's all that matters. Does it matter that the passing score is 700 out of 1,000? No. Would it matter if it's 900 out of 1,000? No. Would it matter if it's 300 out of 1,000? No, it wouldn't. Because you just need to answer the questions. That's all. If Microsoft didn't make good enough to pass, then it's good enough to pass, and you will find out at the end. Study hard, answer the questions to the best of your ability, and you will pass or you will fail. So, next question. Question four. What happens if I fail? Nothing. There's no black mark on your record. There's no permanent record of this. It doesn't matter. Okay? If you fail, take it again. You can take it again immediately afterwards. If you fail it a second time, you have a 14 day cooling off period. And then you can take it again. It doesn't matter. Keep going, keep taking it. Okay? Until you pass. My best, absolute best advice I can give you if you do fail is when you come out of that exam room or you come out of that test, grab a notepad and write down absolutely everything you remember from that exam that you didn't quite understand and Google it straight away. Don't do anything else, okay? Don't even go make a cup of tea. I know you want to because you've just failed the exam, but your objective now is to get it all out of your head while it's fresh in your head. You wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, that will disappear from your head very, very quickly, okay? So write that down immediately, then go do what you need to do. Fill in the holes, do some more study, come back to it. Okay guys, button, like and subscribe down there, bell icon, you know the thing. Thanks. So, how do we study? Well, here's my personal preferred technique. Find the exam page this thing that we're on. There's one for every Microsoft exam. And what you will find is down here, there will be a study guide. Okay. This used to be a PDF document, but now Microsoft have converted it to an actual web page. Scroll down and you will find a list of things, i.e. a list of things in the individual sections. This is the key to passing a Microsoft exam easy mode, right? Those Microsoft exam questions are written by people like you and me. They're written by consultants. They're written by people internally in Microsoft. Where do they get their information from? The same place that I get mine from, Microsoft Docs, okay? So every single section in here you see is related to a specific Microsoft documentation article. So where's the trick? Go in here, grab whatever you want. So for example, down here, configure stored access policies. Right click on that thing and go and Google it or Bing it, whatever flavor you like. Um, people are surprised that I use Bing, but it's really not that bad. You've got to invest a lot of time into it though. So here we go. Configure stored access policies. Define a stored access policy in Microsoft Storage from Microsoft Learn. Thank you very much. We have an article on that specific thing. There will be a question related to this document. Read it. Move on to the next one. Go back again to the study guide. Configure Azure AD authentication for a storage account. Right click, configure AD authentication. Guess what? There's a learn.microsoft.com or Microsoft documentation article on exactly that thing. Read the article. It'll be in there. Okay. The second thing to mention is there's a lot of documentation, obviously, and a lot of reading. This is IT. Get used to it. All right. There is a lot of reading, there is a lot of documentation, there's no getting around this, you've got to sit down and get through it. Um, what I will also mention is, and what I found with Microsoft exams, is that if there is a quick start, like for example here, a quick start within the Azure portal, there's probably a question related to that quick start guide. So yeah, there's no quick and easy way of doing this, there's no 30 second thing I can tell you. There's hours worth of information here, a day's worth of study, but there's a list. Go through the list, search each one of those items, read the appropriate documentation, and you're golden. 
Microsoft do provide a number of different things as well, as I'm sure you're aware. If we scroll down a bit further, there are these sections from the learn.microsoft.com documentation. These are excellent. I do advise reading through these if you have a chance as well, and adding them to your learn.microsoft.com profile. In fact, I should make a video on learn.microsoft.com. Either way, those are my best tips for taking the exam. Don't stress about it. Don't worry about it. You'll do fine. And if this is the start of your cloud career, there's many, 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 many more exams to go. If you've already taken a number of exams in the past, whether you've taken old Microsoft examinations, whether you're taking examinations from other corporations like Cisco or Oracle or anybody else, you'll know this process. It's part of IT. Good luck. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye. Thank you.